Hello, and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Tensions are high in Jerusalem following Friday's terror attack on the Temple Mount and the installations of new security measures around the entrances to the holy site. Israel has placed metal detectors at the Muslim-only entrances to the site of the first and second temples, as well as the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. But the move is being violently protested by the Jordanian Islamic Waqf and its followers, who have clashed with security forces. Now, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah party has called for a day of rage on Wednesday in protest. They want their followers to march towards Israeli checkpoints in the West Bank, and they're saying that Friday's prayer will be held in public squares. With this plan in mind, it seems the likelihood of violence is high. In 2015, Abbas's rhetoric about filthy Zionist feet desecrating Al-Aqsa helped kick off the stabbing intifada. And other Palestinian allegations about damage to the Islamic site have led to riots and violence in the past. Now that a key suspect in the Case 3000 investigation into Israel's purchase of German naval submarines has instead become a state witness, it's been confirmed that Germany is freezing the agreement, which was allegedly the product of bribery. There are allegations that Miki Gun a former agent for the German shipbuilding firm ThyssenKrupp, paid out bribes to Israeli decision makers and even Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's lawyer in order to facilitate the deal. Now, Ganol has made a deal with Israeli investigators and is ready to start naming names. In response, Germany is using a clause in the submarine agreement to cancel the deal. The clause states that Germany is allowed to drop out unilaterally if it is found that corruption and fraud played a part in the agreement. Ganol could have made up to 30 million euros from the 1.5 billion euro submarine deal, and he's not the only high profile suspect. The former commander of Israeli Navy Eliezer Marom is also a suspect, as is Avriel Bar Yosef, the former head of the Israeli National Security Council. A congressional bill to reduce American funding to the Palestinian Authority in response to their financial support for terrorism is stalling in the Senate, but now it sounds like it will pass in a modified form. Anonymous sources are saying that the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, headed by Bob Crocker, a controversial Tennessee senator who helped pass former President Obama's Iran deal, wants changes to weaken the language in the bill. Corker has criticized the all-or-nothing language in South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham's original version of the bill. Crocker is reportedly interested in a revision that would give the president a waiver authority over the bill if he thinks it harms security. The waiver authority, though, is reminiscent of the waiver in the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995, which has been used since the bill was passed to keep the U.S.'s Israeli embassy in Tel Aviv. Israel's ambassador to the U.S., Ron Dermer, says that Israel is completely behind the original bill, saying that, quote, Israel believes that United States should end economic assistance to any government that pays people to kill Jews. Speaking at a CUFI conference, Vice President Mike Pence has just reiterated President Trump's campaign promises to move the American embassy to Jerusalem. Quote, to the men and women of Christians United for Israel, the president hears you. This president stands with you, and I promise you that the day will come when President Donald Trump moves the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It's not a question of if, it's only when. Pence has repeated this promise many times as he's a friend to the pro-Israel community, but there hasn't been any actual promising moves as of yet. Just last month, the president renewed a biannual waiver started in 1995 that postpones the move, just as all his predecessors have since President Clinton. Pence remains adamant, though, promising not just that the president will make good on his word about the embassy, but that Israel's continued well-being is paramount to the administration. He touted how the president is personally committed to helping the parties resolve the long-standing Israeli and Palestinian conflict, and that while there will undoubtedly have to be compromises for peace, Trump there will never, quote, compromise the safety and security of Israel. Pink Floyd band member and infamous BDS supporter Roger Waters has once again lashed out at Radio Hent frontman Tom York over his upcoming show in Tel Aviv. Speaking in a Facebook Live interview with the BDS National Committee, Waters called York out for, quote, whining about feeling insulted. 
He went on to say how York has no right to feel that way though because York largely ignored Waters and other BDS members and will continue to play in Israel as planned, a place Waters compared to as Nazi Germany. Quote, you ignored us all. You won't speak to anyone about anything. That kind of isolationism is extremely unhelpful to everyone, Waters said. Though it's true that York didn't meet with Waters or BDS members personally, he has in previous comments responded to their criticism with his own short explanation. He pointed out that they are not as ignorant as they're being accused of being, since band member Johnny Greenwood has both Palestinian and Israeli friends and a wife who's an Arab Jew. And more importantly, that quote, playing in a country isn't the same as endorsing its government. We've played in Israel for over 20 years through a succession of governments, some more liberal than others as we have in America. We don't endorse Netanyahu any more than Trump, but we still play in America. That's all for now. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.